Hi, this is George, and you're watching The Return of the King Channel. The next big watch day is Pentecost, which begins at sunset on June 11th and ends at sunset on June 12th in Jerusalem, on today's modern Jewish calendar. Pentecost in the Old Testament is called the Feast of Harvest in Exodus 23:16. If God wants to send a clear message to the nation of Israel that Christ is the Messiah, he could do that by taking his bride, the Christian's home, on Pentecost. So it needs to be on the calendar they are currently using. It's well known in Christianity that the church age, the age of grace, began on Pentecost. And taking the Christians home on that day on the Jewish calendar would certainly give them pause. The eclipse that occurred on April 8th occurred in the constellations of Pisces and Cetus. Pisces, the symbol of the Christian, and Cetus, the symbol of the red dragon who dwells in the sea, who desires to devour the fish. The color of the dragon red and the name of the sea the Israelites crossed is not by coincidence. When we overlay the constellations of the red dragon and the fishes on the Red Sea, we see they match. The eclipse occurred on the band of the fish on the right, the same gulf in which the Israelites escaped from the dragon Pharaoh. They didn't meet with God immediately after crossing the Red Sea. They met with God at Mount Sinai in the third month, about three months after crossing the Red Sea. Venus, the bright morning star, on the day of the eclipse, was situated above the tail of the dragon and when overlaid on the map in the same location as Mount Sinai. Jesus, in Revelation 22, 16 and 17, says this, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come. In the Book of Jubilees and on God's original calendar, Pentecost is always on the 15th day of the third month. The Book of Jubilees is an ancient Jewish history book. In the account of the 153 fish, which is symbolic of the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, the number of fish brought out of the sea to Jesus may be giving us a clue to the day of the rapture. Meetings with God occur three times each year. The first, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, occurs on the 15th day of the first month. The last feast, Tabernacles, on the 15th day of the seventh month. So it makes sense that the Feast of Harvest of the First Fruits, also known as Pentecost, would occur on the 15th day of the third month, which it does on God's original calendar. In the Book of Jubilees, we are told the exact day the Israelites met with God at Mount Sinai. It was the 16th day of the third month, the day after Pentecost. Pentecost occurring just before the Israelites and Moses meeting with God appears to be important. It was at Mount Sinai that the Jewish people became God's bride. But when God came to them as Jesus, the Messiah, they rejected him. God then took a Gentile bride, foreshadowed in the story of Ruth and Boaz. Christ is going to take his Gentile bride home first, and then he will focus his attention on the Jewish people and the nation of Israel. Part of the purpose of the tribulation is to have the Jewish nation, the nation of Israel, come to know who their Messiah is, Jesus of Nazareth. Ken Johnson, in his book, The Ancient Dead Sea Scroll Calendar, goes through the history of the Jewish calendar and how it became corrupted during the Greek Seleucid Empire when the nation of Israel was forced to adopt their pagan lunar calendar. God's original calendar did not use the moon. This occurred sometime between 323 and 164 BC. The ancient book of Jubilees gives a prophecy that at some point the Jews would make the grave error of replacing their solar calendar with a lunar one. Here is part of that prophecy. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbeth the seasons, and cometh in from year to year ten days too soon. For this reason the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order, and make an abominable day the day of testimony, and an unclean day a feast day, and they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean, and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. 
For this reason I command and testify to thee, that thou mayest testify to them. For after thy death thy children will disturb them, so that they will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason they will go wrong as to the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths and festivals. He continues, The Dead Sea Scrolls describe how God created one calendar and that the Jews kept it pure down through the ages until the time when the Greek solicit empire forced the nation of Israel to adopt their pagan lunar calendar. They also record a prophecy that this would occur. The Maccabees rose to power and restored Israel's independence, but never restored the original solar calendar. If this Essene history is correct, Israel has been using a forbidden pagan version of the calendar for well over 2,000 years. We can understand why the Essenes referred to the Pharisees as sons of darkness and their dark lunar calendar as a corruption. They referred to themselves as the sons of light because they use God's original solar calendar. In the Bible, there are seven appointed times, three of which are feasts. It is on these three feasts that all males are required to attend. They are meetings with God. Two of the three occur on the 15th day of their respective month, the Feast of Booths or Tabernacles. Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, In the 15th day of the seventh month shall be a Feast of Booths seven days to the Lord. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, and on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to the Lord. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. The third feast, the Feast of Harvest in the Old Testament, has many names. Shavuot, Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Harvest of the first fruits, also known as Pentecost in the New Testament. In the Bible, the date for the Feast of Harvest, Pentecost, is based on the Jubilee. Seven weeks of years, seven times seven, or 49 years. The next year, the 50th year, is the year of Jubilee. The word jubilee in Hebrew is derived from the idea of a joyful shout or trumpet blast. In the 50th year, on the Day of Atonement, the jubilee begins with a trumpet blast. Paul in 1 Corinthians 15.51 says this, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. Pentecost on today's modern Jewish calendar is the last of the feast days. The year begins on Rosh Hashanah in the fall and ends on Shavuot, also known as Pentecost. The trumpet of God sounding on the day of Pentecost would be the last trumpet of the year. It would bring the church age, the age of grace, to a close. God has a very strong track record of doing things on his appointed times. Pentecost is a harvest feast. The harvest is the rapture of the saints. It's a day you meet with God. If two of the three feast days are on the 15th day of the month, you would think the Feast of Harvest Pentecost would also be on the 15th day of its respective month. It is if you're using God's original calendar. In the Book of Jubilees, the Feast of Weeks, also known as Pentecost, is always on the 15th day of the third month. The Book of Jubilees is an ancient Jewish history book. In it we learn that Isaac is born on Pentecost. Judah is born on Pentecost. The covenant with Abraham is made on Pentecost. Jacob and Laban make peace on Pentecost. The rainbow covenant that is made with Noah is on Pentecost. He set his bow in the cloud for a sign of the eternal covenant that there should not again be a flood on the earth to destroy it all the days of the earth. For this reason it is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets that they should celebrate the Feast of Weeks in this month once a year to renew the covenant every year. And this whole festival was celebrated in heaven from the day of creation. We can see all these very important events occurred on Pentecost. We know the church was born on Pentecost. Pentecost is a harvest feast. The harvest occurs at the rapture. 
Could it be possible that they are celebrating this feast day in heaven every year in anticipation of the day that Christ comes to take his bride home, the rapture? Contained within the account of the 153 fish found in the last chapter of the Gospel of John is the rapture of the church. The account occurs at dawn. The fish symbolize Christians. Jesus has the disciples cast the net on the right side of the boat, and the catch is so large that the net has to be left in the water. Jesus then has them bring some of the fish to him. Notice, not all of them. A very specific number is given, 153. Why 153? The Feast of Unleavened Bread begins on the 15th day of the first month. Put the two numbers together in the order in which they are given, you get the number 151. The Feast of Booths or Tabernacles begins on the 15th day of the seventh month. Put the two numbers together in the order in which they are given, and you get the number 157. We know from the Book of Jubilees and the Dead Sea Scroll calendar, also known as the Essene or Enoch's calendar, that the Feast of Harvest was on the 15th day of the third month. If two of the three appointed times to meet with God are on the 15th day of the month, it would make sense that the third time you are to meet with God is also on the 15th. The number of fish, 153, is not just some random number picked out of the blue. A lot of different theories have been proposed as the meaning of the number. I have yet to see anyone mention the most logical meaning of that number, the true day of Pentecost. It's the only meaning that makes sense from what we know today about Jewish history and God's original calendar. Is Jesus telling us in the Gospel of John that on some Pentecost he will snatch the fishes out of the sea? The rapture is an escape from the dragon who dwells in the sea. Hidden within the landscape of Egypt, the Red Sea, and Israel is the story of the rapture. Up at the top of the map, we find Mount Hermon. This is where in the book of Enoch, which is quoted in the book of Jude, the 200 angels descended from heaven and took human women as wives. The offspring of this unholy union were the giants found in Genesis chapter 6. This area around Mount Hermon is known as Bashan, the land of the serpent. Jesus went twice to the base of Mount Hermon to put the powers of darkness on notice that he's come to take his kingdom back. Because Jesus came here twice before, this is where I believe at the rapture we will meet in the air. The final chapter begins when Christ takes his bride home. Just below Mount Hermon is the Sea of Galilee. This is where the account of the 153 fish occurred. Further down, you'll see the Dead Sea, and just below that, Mount Sinai. This is the very mountain where, when the trumpet of God sounded, Moses went up and God came down, symbolic of the rapture. It was at Mount Sinai that God betrothed the Israelites as his bride. The sequencing of events during the rapture are matched on the topography of the Red Sea in Egypt. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command and with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. It wouldn't surprise me if the trumpet of God heard round the world at the rapture originates from Mount Sinai, just as it did to summon the Israelites to the base of the mountain to meet with God. When this trumpet sounds, I believe Christ will appear for the third time, somewhere above this region, near Mount Hermon, and above what's referred to as the gates of hell. After the trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ will rise first. Above Mount Sinai is the Dead Sea. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Moving further north from the Dead Sea, we arrive at the Sea of Galilee, the setting for the account of the 153 fish. Just above the Sea of Galilee stands Mount Hermon and the gates of hell. Jesus is delivering a final warning to the forces of darkness. Judgment day has arrived, but first I will rescue my bride. Then I am coming to take back what is mine. Throughout history, various ancient civilizations, including the Jewish nation, held the belief that mountaintops served as gateways to and from the heavenly realms. Mount Hermon is particularly significant because it's where the 200 angels descended from heaven to earth, 
and I believe it will also serve as our departure point to heaven, where we will always be with the Lord. The timing of the rapture appears to be discerned by aligning the constellations of the red dragon and fishes with the geographical features of the Red Sea. The prophet Joel tells us the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. The April 8, 2024 eclipse appears on the band of the fish in the same gulf that the Israelites crossed to escape from Pharaoh and his army. Venus appears above the tail of the dragon in the same location as Mount Sinai. Jesus in Revelation 22:16 and 17 tells us that he's the bright morning star, and the spirit and bride say, Come. The Israelites met with God on the 16th day of the third month, we are told, in the book of Jubilees. The Feast of Weeks, also known as the Feast of Harvest of the First Fruits in the Old Testament, and known as Pentecost in the New Testament, occurred on the 15th day of the third month on God's original calendar. That Pentecost comes one day prior to the Israelites' meeting with God at Mount Sinai, I believe is telling us that Jesus is coming first for his Gentile bride, and then he will begin the difficult and painful process of bringing the Jewish nation of Israel to realize the one whom they have pierced was the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. The next question is which calendar will God use for Pentecost if his plan is to rapture the church on Pentecost? Jesus' death and resurrection was based on the calendar in use by the Jewish leadership at the time. Jesus had to die on Passover to fulfill the prophecy of Passover, and he had to rise on the day of the first fruits offering, and the coming of the Holy Spirit to power the church had to occur on Pentecost. God had to use the calendar in use at the time, otherwise we would never see the prophecies fulfilled. If God's intent is to show the nation of Israel that Jesus is the Messiah, he could make it very clear by taking the Christians home on the day of Shavuot, Pentecost on Israel's Jewish calendar. Pentecost begins at sunset in Israel on June 11th and ends at sunset on June 12th. The Israelites met with God at Mount Sinai in the morning. At dawn on Pentecost, it's the constellations of the rapture that appear in the eastern sky. The account of the 153 fish occurs in the morning as the sun is rising. It's symbolic of the rapture. The number 153 is telling us something. It's there for a reason. It's pointing us to Pentecost. Jesus very well could be telling us when he's coming to snatch the fishes from the dragon who dwells in the sea. The planet Mars symbolizes the red dragon. It's just above the head of the dragon. The Sun, Venus, and Mercury are between the horns of the coming judge, Christ. Jupiter, symbolizing the Christian from the Revelation 12 sign, is in Taurus underneath the Pleiades. Joseph Zeiss, in his book, The Gospel and the Stars, says this about Taurus and the Pleiades. Among the early nations, there was a widespread idea connecting this bull with the Deluge and the Pleiades. The seven stars, the doves, the peculiar star cluster of sweet influences, with the Ark of Noah and those saved by it in that great judgment. The seven stars, which the scriptures also connect with the church, are on the back of this bull, high up on his great shoulder. The Pleiades, according to the myths, were the seven daughters of Atlas, the upholder of heaven and earth, who, with their sisters, the Hades, and this bull's head, were placed in heaven because of their virtues and mutual sympathy and affection. They beautifully symbolize the saints securely supported by the terrible judge, and who, together with the holy angels whom they are like, thus move with him and his inflictions upon the guilty world. Next, let's look at the scene in the context of the rapture found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. 
For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. The symbols in the heavens of Jesus God and the archangel are all grouped together between the horns of Christ the judge. All three have a role to play at the time of the rapture. And the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. There's a very complete story of the rapture of the church in the heavens on Pentecost, also known as the Feast of Harvest in the Old Testament. There are a lot of very good reasons to believe that this could be the day. We will find out soon enough. As we head into the fall, the story in the heavens is that of the temporary rule of Satan over the inhabitants of the earth. Saturn will spend five of the next seven years in the constellation of the Antichrist, Cetus, the Red Dragon. It will spend the last two years in Taurus, and on the Day of Atonement, when Christ returns, it will be located on the lower horn of Taurus, Christ the Judge. Very symbolic of the defeat Satan and his army will experience at the hands of Christ and his army. On today's modern Jewish calendar, on the first day of the religious calendar, April 8th, we had a total solar eclipse in the constellations of the rapture accompanied by a comet. On the first day of the seventh month, on the eve of the Feast of Trumpets, which begins at sunset on October 2nd, which is the first day of the year on the Jewish civil calendar, we have a ring of fire eclipse in the constellation of Virgo, and a comet in the constellation of the serpent Hydra. The story in the heavens on this day is that of the seed of the woman, Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, coming to crush the head of the serpent, Satan. The storyboard in the heavens is shifting this fall to the tribulation, the Lion of the tribe of Judah coming to take his kingdom back from the serpent. One way or another, our time here on earth is very short. Thanks for watching.